Hey everyone, welcome back to the Thundershawn Podcast. So today I'm discussing and give my thoughts on the recently revealed Transformers Legacy United Commander Class Beast Wars Universe Magamatron. So if you're wondering when and how this figure was revealed, it was revealed at the 1027 live stream, an exclusive live stream to all Hasbro Pulse Premium members. And it's actually now up and available on HasbroPulse.com. It is a pre-order and it should be open for everyone, kind of depending on when you're listening and watching this podcast summit. But as of the time I'm recording this audio, it is in stock and it should be available for non-members and members but getting into the basic information of the price and release date and my thoughts and feelings on the figure the price is $90 but do keep in mind for commander class figures and kind of titan classes the price does sort of vary depending where you're going to purchase the figure like typically hazard pulse you know it's pretty much just straight always $90 but I've seen occasionally it be about you know 95 to 100 so do keep that in mind wherever you purchase this figure um and the release date is July 1st, 2024. So that is very far away. Probably a tough pill to swallow for quite a few people because you know you might be very excited and looking forward to this figure like I am. But unfortunately, that is pretty far away. But you do have to keep in mind, I think typically for these specific classes and these figures like the Commander class and the Titan class, I think Hasbro likes to do a very far away date because of course they do spend a lot more time and money on these more expensive, high budget, you know, complex figures because they don't want to have the release date be early. And of course, people complain about it breaking or having QC proms or not working properly, stuff like that. So I think they want to do a far away date for these more expensive items. And, you know, if it's on time, if everything's going good, they can actually make the release date early and make people happy. And I think that's definitely what they're going to do for this figure. And most likely, eventually, whenever they post the upcoming 2024 Titan class, they'll probably do the same. I think it'll be a very far away date, like October or something of 2024, and it will move much, much sooner. Um... But I do have to say, it was actually quite surprising to see the reveal of Magmatron today because most people, myself included, you know, there was a lot of speculation going on, a lot of rumors and talk like, what are we going to see at the 1027 live stream? And a lot of people, again, myself included, were thinking we were going to see these Stu series reveals because quite a while ago, just after PulseCon, uh, several of the people from Hasbro, you know, typical people who announce and reveal the reveals of Transformers, they actually did say and confirm we will have Stu series reveals at the end of October or the end of this month. And, you know, it's been kind of a long wait. It's been kind of a guessing game. You know, there's been a few times where we're like, okay, it's going to be today. Nothing will happen. And we thought today was the day, but unfortunately nothing happened. I do want to quickly address, I think we probably will see those reveals next week. I do think there is a uh, convention or kind of a Comic-Con going on somewhere else. And that's when we're supposed to see the reveals of the studio series. But I don't think we'll actually see them uh, for pre until Tuesday because there is actually a drop date or a drop zone on earth entertainment saying or kind of hinting about transformers for that tuesday so i'm pretty sure on tuesday i think it is actually the 31st or halloween in october that's probably when we're going to get that transformers tuesday for all those two series hopefully i'm correct this is really just kind of speculation and guesses it really has to happen soon like i said before they said it should be by the end of october so there's really you know not that many days left so we'll just have to wait and see could could happen very soon we really don't know but getting into this figure, um, I have to say, it actually looks really, really cool. I'm very impressed. And I was actually so surprised. Like I said, I was not expecting to see Magmatron. And also, I'm actually very happy how very far ahead Hasbro and Hasbro Pulse is with this figure. Because, you know, typically, if you have been collecting and paying attention to Transformers news, you know, for several years now, usually we see the reveal of, like, the Commander class and the Titan class in, like, summer, you know, like, maybe May or June of the following year, not, like, this year. You know, this is very early because typically we'll see you know the full wave of wave two or three kind of varies when we actually get the commander class and the titan class it kind of bounces back between wave two and three but usually we see that you know middle to the end of that year but we actually cut it the year before so it's actually a really good sign maybe they're actually kind of on top of the game which i'm actually very happy to see um but I have to say, it just looks so cool. We actually have quite a few things confirmed with this reveal, because, you know, when they first officially showed off all of Legacy United Wave 1 uh, during PulseCon, we had the official poster reveal, and we learned about Magnetron, and one of the main questions was, is Magnetron going to be the Titan class, or is he going to be the Commander class? And our questions have been answered, he is going to be the Commander class. So, that does kind of narrow it down. Um, I guess, most likely, the Titan class is going to be Tidal Wave, or it could be something else. We really don't know, but 
definitely probably the number one suspicion, you know, the number one guess now, since of course Magmatron has been kind of taken off the board, it's Tidal Wave, or it could be something else. Maybe we could actually have two Commander classes. I actually am still open to that possibility. Maybe because Magmatron is so early, you know, so early revealed, he might come out, you know, February or March or something like that. Maybe, you know, towards the end of 2024, September, October, maybe we'll get a second Commander class for the Legacy United line, and that could be where Tidal Wave comes in. Or it could be the Titan class. So we really don't know. Um, but getting into the figure, it looks very impressive. I do love the crazy, you know, wacky design. I actually really love how all of the, you know, animals incorporate into the robot mode. Like, you know, there's just random bits sticking out here and there. Like, you know, he has a huge T-Rex head on his shoulder. He has the huge pterodactyl wings on his back. He actually has the huge shield from one of that really cool sea creature animal. And he also has this huge sword. Now, I do love the really cool design. I do love this figure, but I do have to say there are a few of bits on the arms that do look very cluttery and kind of, you know, chunky. I do hope, um, Maybe some of these image are uh, some of these images of this figure are mistransformed. You do have to keep in mind, especially for how early this figure is. You know, it's going to be coming out in July. They say um, it's a very high possibility some of these or all of these images could be mistransformed. We don't really know by how much. Of course, we really won't know until we get the figure in hand. There could just be one minor step, or there could be a major change that we don't know about. So I do hope maybe once we get the figure in hand, the arms can be a bit more clean because there's a few images where the arms look very chunky, very panelly, not looking the greatest. But the rest of the figure looks so cool. I actually do love how the claws from the pterodactyl or the bird dinosaur actually kind of wrap over his shoulder. I think that's so cool. And I do love the gold. And one thing they did mention during the live stream is that they're definitely going to be taking that classic design trait and cue from Kingdom, where there's the texturing detailing, you know, the really cool kind of skin texturing. They use that a lot on the Beast Wars characters, you know, uh, Beast Wars Megatron, Optimus Primal. He had that fur detailing, so they're probably going to be using quite a bit of that design on this figure, which I'm actually really glad they're bringing that back. Um... As far as accessories go, that I know of, um, I think there's like seven or nine accessories, I'm pretty sure. Um, he does come with one sword, one shield. I am unsure if the shield is removable because I'm pretty sure the shield is actually formed out of one of the animals, so that might be a permanent part of the figure like you can't remove it you know the only way you can you know remove it is by uncombining the figure it might be permanently attached to the arm i don't know as for ex other accessories he does come with some blaster pieces and thankfully enough they are not the jet fire ones they're actually the omega supreme ones which i'm actually okay with because they've only used them i think like once or twice maybe three times the two uh of the times that are coming to mind right now are ultra magnus actually the commander class of this year uh for stu series and and also a Mega Supreme, but both those figures, you know, are really expensive, hard to find items. So I have to say, probably the likelihood of someone having all three, you know, or both of those two right now. And even if you do, you know, it's only been two times. They've used the Jet Fire ones like 18 times. So I'll take these any day over the Jet Fire ones. Would I have preferred a new blaster piece? Of course I would, but I think it's fine that they're using these. Um, I actually really do like with these, it's a whole stack and every single one is different. You know, with Jetfire, you get two stacks of the same, you know, three blaster pieces. It's the really skinny one, the kind of the medium sized one and the really big one. But these, uh, the tip is different and you knew all the way to the bottom, all of them are different. And I think it actually comes with two extra tips, pretty much exactly like Ultra Magnus. If you're wondering what blaster pieces I'm talking about, if you don't have Ultra Magnus from Stu Series yet, just look up Ultra Magnus. He comes with this big stack of orange blaster Blaster pieces. It's a huge explosion. It's pretty much those exact same ones, but this time they're done in this really cool dark purple. That is one thing I really do like about that. It's this really cool dark energy on purple. Looks very scary, very evil, and I do love that color. Um, and getting into, um, I guess, articulation, it actually seems to be pretty plausible. That was, to, truth be told, one of my concerns when I first, you know, heard uh, and we learned about a possible Magmatron because, you know, it's three animals forming one figure. So you do have to, you know, beg a question, how poseable, you know, and um, easy is this actually going to be to, you know, hold the pose and do a pose? And it actually seems pretty well articulated. I think there was a few poses where he was using a waist rotation, so it does appear he actually has has a waist rotation. So I think that's pretty cool. That's um, very surprising how they can actually do that, you know? Um, 
I'm actually just really puzzled on how this is going to transform because, you know, there's no, like, shell, there's no skeleton, like, you know, with the legacy Stunticons, when they transform to Menasaur, you know, they have the whole trailer as sort of its, its shell, its skeleton, its base to hold everything together, you know, every part attached to it, and you could separate them, but this, you know, all three is the figure. There's no, you know, bonus pieces. There's no trailer. There's no skeleton. There's no nothing. So I'm very interested to see how it's going to transform. Um, I actually did miss this the first time around. Um, uh, the figure does transform in 33 steps, in case you're wondering. If you're wondering where I got that information from, that's actually in the description of uh, the post. I'm assuming this should probably be on pretty much all Transformers uh, or action figure sites, you know, all, all sets that sell Transformers, all action figure sites, you know, Big Bad Toy Store, TF Source, all stuff like that. It probably should be in the description. If it's not, just go to Hasbro Pulse on the item. It's right below. I saw it, like, instantly when I scrolled down. So, um, it's not on the back of the box which is a bit weird. They actually do show the front and back of the box, but it's not there, but I just looked below. And 33 steps, that's actually a pretty good number of steps. I actually was expecting it to be more, because, you know, our past Commander Class Ultra Minus was 43, but maybe it's 33, but each individual one is going to be very complex and interesting. Um... And you do have to keep in mind, you know, pretty much we go through the same process every year for the commander classes. Uh, some people, I usually don't do this, but some people question, oh, is this figure worth $90 or $100? Which, yes, you can, you know, question that. I mean, that's that's pretty expensive, $90 or $100 or $80 in that range. That's pretty expensive for an action figure. Um, I typically do think they are worth it. But you also do have to keep in mind, most of these you are not paying for the size. You're usually paying for the engineering like, um, I mean, you know, Jetfire, he was pretty much, uh, like the only one where you're like, you're paying for his size. Cause he was like 15 inches tall. He was pretty big. He was, he was the very first commander class figure. And that really surprised us. We were like, Whoa, this is massive. Like this is not a leader. This is not a Voyager. I mean, it's like two of those put together. Um, I guess you could say Skylinks is one of those big ones, but after a while, you know, they started getting, I guess, smaller in a way. Like, you know, Ronimus, he's pretty much the size of a, of a Voyager or maybe, maybe a leader. So, again, keep in mind, you're really paying for the engineering. This probably could be big. In the description on Hasbro Pulse, it does say 10 inches tall, which probably doesn't sound that tall to most people. But I have to say, considering his, you know, very intricate weird design, you know, how much stuff is sticking out. Probably once you get the figure in hand, you're going to be like, wow, this is pretty big for 10 inches, you know, because he has the huge wings, he has the tail, you know, he has the huge sword. So definitely, I think probably once you get the figure in hand, you're going to be like, this seems like 15 inches, not 10 inches. Um... And as for the beast modes, um, I actually, I think they look pretty cool. Um, definitely, of course, not the main attraction for me, and I'm definitely more interested in the robot mode. I will be displaying this figure in that robot mode, of course. That's uh, what I always do, but um, I actually really like how it's three separate animals. You know, they could have easily just done, we're going to do one of them. You know, we're just going to do the pterodactyl. You know, they could have... Um, just focused on one, you know, just had it transform into one, but they're going to do three, which, um, is actually kind of nice, you know, cause typically, you know, with most figures, we have one robot, one alt mode, that's it. But it's, you know, you have a whole, you know, pretty much array sort of just bonus figures, a three in one it actually does say that on the box, a three in one. So I actually kind of like that sort of a little, you know, some little bonuses with this set. I think that's a, a cool inclusion. Um, and as for the packaging, it actually does show the front and back, as I mentioned before. The front looks so cool, amazing artwork. I do love the three-in-one text. That really does take me back to some of the old figures, you know, not like the you know, super old ones, but like some of the some of the generations toys, and I think maybe some of the old movie toys we'd see three-in-one. So very nostalgic for me. I really don't know why, but also the back of the box has the images, you know, of all the modes, the combined form and the three individual dinosaurs. But that is pretty much it for this podcast. I mean, I really do hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on this figure in the comment section down below, and I will see you next time.